Anyone who's serious about Crunker knows that the game's physics are tied to the game's frame rate. In this example, you can see the differences in jump height between the different frame rates. 144 FPS and above can easily jump over the box, but 60 FPS cannot. If you were to do a race while slide hopping, unlimited FPS would come out ahead, with 144 FPS not too far behind, and 60 FPS coming in third place. If you think this is unfair, you're definitely not alone, but also understand that really big AAA studios have the exact same problem of game physics being tied to the game's frame rate. Just like this example of Fallout 76 on the PC. If this is true, then why have I been playing on 144 FPS? Because of its impact on gameplay, I wanted to make sure that my channel didn't have content that other players didn't have access to. The other reason is that playing on limited FPS also puts more load on the PC. So if you're streaming and running Kroger at the same time, you might experience more frame rate drops. So even though you're not going to get the highest frame rates, your frame rates are going to be really consistent at display capped FPS. Eventually, I'm certain that this will be fixed, but it's unclear whether it's a quick fix or is going to require a more drastic overhaul of the game engine. Okay, so why am I just now deciding to switch to unlimited FPS? The first reason is that 144 FPS and unlimited FPS are not too different when it comes to game physics, not as different as I thought. For example, if I'm getting 400 FPS, I'm not getting like 3x higher jump speed. It seems like at a certain upper limit, it doesn't become as drastic, kind of slows down in the grade of its effect. The next reason is that honestly, I should take every advantage that I can get. Um, you don't see in other esports like people electing to take a disadvantage. Um, the only examples I can think of is like Nick Merckx playing controller in Fortnite. Um, but he switched to PC himself, so he could play at higher FPS and play against harder opponents. So when it comes to his PC's performance, he obviously um, didn't hold anything back. I'm not going to reveal my age yet, but I am an older gamer, and at this point, I truly will take every advantage that I can get as the Crunker player base improves in skill, which is really awesome to see and I love playing against harder and harder opponents. The next reason why I'm switching to unlimited FPS is just because of the decreased input lag that you get from increasing the game's frame rate. So even though my monitor is 144 hertz, that means it refreshes 144 times every second. Um, there's still a benefit that you get from mouse control when playing with higher frame rate because when you move the mouse, um, the game is updating much, much higher, much more frequently. So if you're moving the mouse at 60 FPS, it's going to be updating its position 60 frames per second, whereas at higher frame rates, it's just going to feel a lot more responsive because each frame just hits a lot faster. The next reason why I switched to unlimited FPS is because the game's performance has just gotten so good that I'm really not getting those frame rate drops at all like I used to. Just looking at this gameplay clip that I'm showing you right here, my frame rates really don't drop below 220 FPS and they get as high as 350. And when I'm playing without screen recording, I'm getting you know nearly 400 FPS and above. And unless the frame rate drops below 144 because I have a 144 hertz monitor, I'm really not gonna be noticing it too much if I do get frame rate drops. So those are the reasons why I switched to unlimited FPS and I'm really enjoying it so far. I feel like I have more mouse control. And I know that not everyone has access to these settings, but in the future, the physics being tied to games FPS will be fixed. Sid mentioned that he would like to fix it in one of his streams before. And secondly, if they add something like um, a max FPS setting, I think that would really help. Now there's also like a theoretical question to address here, and that's, is high FPS pay to win? Well, it kind of is, but I would also argue that Kronker is a lot less pay to win than other first person shooter games. I remember when PUBG first came out, how poorly optimized that game was. In fact, I bought a GTX 1080 just so I could run PUBG better on my PC. And it still didn't run that well until now. Um, now the game's performance is quite good. But just look at every other example in esports today, and the hardware required to play the game at the top level is very, very high. Overwatch League uses 240Hz monitors, same for Fortnite and a lot of other high-end esports. On the other hand, just look at Crunker. It runs on just about any system, and if you wanted to play competitively, GTX 1060 or even a GTX 1050 would probably allow you to get 200 plus FPS easily. So should you use the unlimited FPS feature on the Crunker client? I think the answer is that it depends. 
if you're averaging frame rates of about 200 and above, I think the answer is definitely yes. But if you're below that, then you need to see if you're getting frame rate drops that are below 144 FPS. When it can be, you know, impacting the screen tearing and the stuttering on your display. If you do not have a 144 hertz monitor, if your display is capped at 60 hertz, I would argue that you probably should almost always use unlimited FPS. Um, because the problem with being display locked at 60 FPS is that the input lag on your mouse is going to be worse than if you had higher frame rates. So again, the best solution would be a user-defined max frame rate. But if you have a 60 hertz monitor or laptop display, I think that you should probably turn unlimited FPS on. So now I'm going to show you guys some gameplay of me getting a nuke with the unlimited FPS setting turned on. And if you stay tuned until the end of the video, I'll be announcing the winner of the mouse giveaway. Congratulations to Tempower, the winner of the mouse giveaway. I will be sending you an Air 58 and Zowie Kamad mouse bungee. Overall, this contest felt a bit more fair than the previous, since it included a simple question of writing down your YouTube channel as a requirement. This prevented contest spammers from Twitter invading the contest too much. The winner was of course randomly selected using the Gleam system. And remember, there were multiple ways to enter for a greater chance to win. If you didn't win, don't worry, I will have more contests starting very soon. If you enjoyed this video, as always, please like and subscribe. Thank you.